Hello, my name is Erin Gao and this is my research partner, Deep Patel. As SpaceML researchers working alongside the NASA IMPACT team, we have researched a new scalable data balancing technique for unlabeled satellite imagery. Data imbalances pose a huge problem in machine learning applications. In the space sciences, there are many petabytes of satellite imagery data. This is valuable information that is not being put to good use due to lack of labels. For example, let's say a scientist wanted to create a hurricane classification system to detect hurricanes in the NASA Worldview dataset. Because 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by water bodies, the dataset will have a much higher percentage of water imagery than hurricane imagery. As a result, a naive machine learning model could simply classify everything as ocean and still achieve a 70% accuracy. Due to the imbalances and lack of labels, a hurricane classifier trained on a random set of data from the worldview dataset would be completely worthless. In conclusion, data imbalances make it difficult to train good classifiers, preventing scientists from making large strides in machine learning research, and they ruin the benefit of large data sets. Clearly, data imbalances pose a serious problem in machine learning. In order to solve this issue, we will need a balanced training set. So how do we get a balanced data from an unbalanced data set? There are many viable strategies we could try, such as oversampling, undersampling, or smote. But these strategies need labeled data. So what if we don't have labels to begin with? Well, you can't pick and choose a balanced data set because you don't even know all of the labels. So the only other option for balancing unlabeled data is to simply get a random bunch of it labeled. But this is expensive. We need to get a random bunch of data, label it, and balance the labeled data, and then discard the unnecessary labels. That'd be a waste of time and resources. But what if we could balance data without depending on labels? What if we could deterministically choose which images result in maximum accuracy gain? What if we could scale up the process of choosing relevant data? Well, instead of balancing a data set using labels, we choose to do it with embeddings. Here's a quick refresher on embeddings, which will help you understand the methods we use to balance our data sets. Basically, passing a data point through a convolutional neural network converts it to a multidimensional vector called an embedding. And the most important property is that the embeddings of similar objects are co-located together, while dissimilar images are relatively further from each other in this multidimensional space. Similarly, if we have an unbalanced data set, we can choose the most diverse embeddings, and as a result, we'll get a more balanced data set. By picking images evenly from these locations, we can get a balanced sampling of the data set. To measure the distance between embeddings, we use the Euclidean metric for distance because it is fast to compute and provides good insight into the location of embeddings. Let's consider this unbalanced data set. We will show how diversity runs on more cluster points like these embeddings of satellite imagery. Each image that you see on the graph is the location of the embedding on that image on that you map plot. As you can see, images that look similar are clustered together. For example, beaches are closer to beaches and harbors are closer to harbors. So when we run our diversity algorithm, it should choose an equal amount of images per class. First, the diversity algorithm would choose a forest image. Then the furthest from the forest would be a harbor image. The next furthest from the both of them would be a dense residential image. And the furthest from those three would be beaches. Then it picks one from the airplanes cluster. As you can see from the well-defined clusters, the diversity algorithm seems to be picking an even amount of images per class. So even though we do not know the labels of these images, this diversity algorithm picks different things with almost equal probability because the embeddings are clustered. So by trying to choose one image per well-defined cluster at a time, this diversity algorithm will give us the balanced data set we need. Let's see our algorithm run on a real world application. Let's look at some real experiments where everything might not be perfect. Let's prove that we can use embeddings in our diversity algorithm to balance an unbalanced data set. We use the diversity algorithm to balance this subset of UC Merced data. As you can see, there are about three small classes and three large classes. And how do we know if the diversity algorithm gives us a better balanced set? Well, 
we can use standard deviation as a metric for imbalance. If a data set had a large imbalance, then many of its class sizes would be far from the mean, thus a large standard deviation. For a more balanced data set, this deviation from the mean will be small. So that data set would have a smaller standard deviation. So overall, the lower standard deviation equates to a more balanced data set. Now, back to the experiment with UC Merced. As you can see from the results, the standard deviation for the diverse set of data is significantly smaller than the random, a drop from almost about 0.79 to 0.56. Thus, the diverse data set is more balanced. Furthermore, if we use this diverse data for training, the accuracy of the classifier increases by about 14%, pretty significant. Finally, if we wanted to get the accuracy of the diverse classifier using randomly selected data, you will need about two and a half times more randomly selected points to do that. So with only a fraction of the labels, we were able to get a more balanced data set and a far better classifier using embeddings in our diversity algorithm. Now we will cheaply balance this data set of unbalanced satellite imagery. Remember, traditionally, data scientists would randomly pick hundreds of images, get them labeled, and then balance from there. However, using embeddings, we can do the same thing, starting with less than 100 labels. We will use a self-feeding approach to improve the data set balance over multiple iterations. Here's the plan, starting off with a tiny amount of labeled data. We will train a classifier, pass the data set through it to get embeddings, find the most diverse embeddings, thus creating a more balanced training set. However, it won't be perfect right away. So we'll repeat this process by training with our more balanced set, then picking the most diverse embeddings. Then we'll add the newly selected diverse images to the training set and we'll repeat this process again. Let's try it out. The very first time, we pick a tiny random subset of labeled data, train a convolutional neural network, and then pass the entire data set through the same CNN to get the embeddings of each data point. But remember, our data set is unbalanced. So we really only get a couple of actual decent clusters because the larger classes are represented better. But look at what the diversity algorithm chose, a more balanced data set. You can see that by the drop in the standard deviation. When we train again and create the embeddings, we now see that there are more well-defined clusters. And what happens when we run diversity? We get a more balanced set of data because there are more clusters. This is amazing. We are only using a fraction of the labels, and we already have a set of data that is more balanced than what we began with. Let's continue this process. By the time we reach the seventh iteration, we can see that the model is able to cluster embeddings far better than before. This is partly due to the increase in the size of the training set, but also due to the fact that the training set is being balanced more at each iteration, and the standard deviation decreased greatly as well. Now, let's look at the final results. Here, you can see that the standard deviation has decreased, while the validation accuracy of the convolutional neural network has increased due to the better balanced data set. So we've proven that with just a little bit of labeled data, we can get a balanced data set by using embeddings. And you can see that it contributes to better validation accuracy as well. The diversity algorithm provides a cost-effective method of balancing unlabeled data in unbalanced data sets. However, it does have some weaknesses, which we do hope to address. It doesn't generate perfectly balanced data sets, and it could slightly offset a uniform data set. Furthermore, it's currently pretty computationally expensive, but we aim to research ways to improve its speed while improving its efficacy. As a result, we see that we have found a new method for balancing data sets, a method that does not entirely rely on labels, but instead on the power of embeddings and diversity. So the scientists who want to create their hurricane classifier can now do so using the diversity algorithm on the embeddings of a worldview data set. We began with the idea of balancing a data set until we found that using labels wouldn't suffice. And now after going through a rabbit hole of failures and findings, we find great value in embeddings. So we created a scalable technique usable in any deep learning project that gives us balanced data 
better classifiers and cost efficient labels. However, we have plans to improve it further. In the future, we hope to develop this technique by applying cluster predictions in hopes of improving balancing. We also want to see which data sets the strategy works best on, depending on size and balance. Nevertheless, this strategy will help many scientists across many disciplines. From satellite imagery, cancer detection, to agricultural machine learning, we believe that this technique can provide benefits and we will work to make it a reality. Thank you all for listening. If you have any questions, feel free to ask us in the live Q&A, and we hope you all stay safe during these times. Thank you.